Sometimes when I take notes, I do so top down. Something comes up at work or I'm assigned a topic and I go out and specifically research that topic. My preferred way of working though is bottom up, meaning I like to just take notes on whatever I'm interested in at the time without any regard for what I'm going to do with them later. And then I make notes based on stuff I already have, based on notes that organically cluster around certain topics. If you're like me though, when you hear that, you think that sounds nice in theory, but in reality, how do you actually identify those clusters? In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can go from a bunch of just random notes to actually being able to spot patterns emerging among them and being able to make something useful out of them. Emergence is a book that I read recently by someone named Steven Johnson. Emergence is effectively the evolution of a whole beyond its parts in unexpected ways. It's when new and complex behaviors arise in a system as a whole that none of the individual parts exhibited. For example, a single ant on its own is a pretty basic creature. It is very rudimentary in its thought processes. It basically has a job and it's just trying to do it to the best of its abilities. Each ant is trying to do its best. And yet when you put them all together, they evolve into an ant colony that can make complex decisions and move and cooperate in strange ways that none of the individual ants displayed. I think that the whole concept of ant queens is kind of misleading because Ant leaders don't exist in the same way that human leaders do. There is no one queen or group of ants that are actually making all the decisions for the colony. And yet somehow somebody's making decisions or they're making decisions individually that just seem to emerge as cooperation. Another example is natural selection. While no one animal is trying to consciously manipulate its genetic code to make its species to be more than what it is, over a very long period of time, species evolve and evolve in such a way as to improve the chances of survival of that entire species as a whole. These behaviors just seem to arise without anyone intending them, without anyone deliberating or strategizing on them. This is the concept of emergence, this strange quality of organized but complex systems being able to develop in ways we can't always expect or comprehend. Now stay with me. What if we apply this concept of emergence to note taking? What would emergent note taking look like? Well, it would look like a system where we could combine different notes in unexpected ways that create something more than what the notes were about. That would mean rethinking the way that we take notes and rethinking the way that we combine them. So here are some ways to facilitate emergence. In general, there are two ways that we can encourage ideas to emerge from our notes. The first is to write notes that we will find, and the second is to try different ways to find notes. Writing notes that you'll find might mean a different thing to you than it would to me, so I'm just going to show how I do it in case it helps you out as well. The way that I like to do this is to think about how I'm going to find a note before I create it. That's usually done using a template like this. This is a template from my Patreon vault. You can check out the link up there to join my Patreon if you'd like to have access to this template and other templates. But I'm also just going to show you what the template looks like. There's not that much to it, but I'm going to show you how I set it up so that it's automatically applied. I'm using a plugin called Templator. And within the templator settings, I already have some folder templates. You'll need to enable this if it's not already enabled. And I have a bunch of default templates that are going to be used for these folders. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a different one, but I'm going to put it at the bottom. Now you can also just move templates up and down. And what that means is the ones at the top will be applied first. So those are the super specific ones. Here, I'm just going to use the parent directory and then I'm going to look for that note. Now, what should happen is if I just create a note within meetings, then it'll apply the person template and then it'll go down this list. And if none of those has been applied yet, then it'll default to this note template. Now, if I go here and I just click on new note, it is going to create a new note, but it's going to apply the template that I had. So let's just have a look at that again. 
So it has some templator strings. So you'll see that it was already filled in exactly according to the template, except that the date and the file title have now been replaced by the actual date and the file title. So I'm going to kind of generally follow the latch system. Latch stands for location, alphabet, time, category, and hierarchy. I kind of talked about this in this video, but I'm also briefly going through it here. First is location. I kind of think of location in a different sense now. I could think about it in terms of geography and have another location parameter here, but that doesn't really occur that often outside of my game session notes. So I kind of think of location now in terms of where this note is in the context of my vault. To do this, I'm going to show you what this looks like in my actual vault with a real example. So I've got this book that I read some time ago called The Clean Coder. Let's say I want to create a note for clean coding. So I'm going to open up something new. And again, the same sort of parameters are filled in because I have the same template in my personal one that I do on the Patreon one. So I'm going to call it clean code. So now let's think about location. Where does this belong within my notes? And the way that I like to do that is through links. So when describing what clean code is, I'm going to think about other notes that I already have that come to mind. Clean code is a practice in software development. I'm going to stop there and not finish the rest of the sentence, but I'm just showing you that this is already kind of trying to place it relative to something else, which in this case is my note on software development. This is that note and it already has a bunch of stuff in it, but I'm trying to show what it's adjacent to. And that's kind of my interpretation of location. In terms of alphabet, this doesn't matter so much in a digital filing system, but it is a prompt to think about the title. Should it be clean code or should it be clean coding? Well, another way that you can kind of hedge your bets on this because remember, we're trying to write something that we're going to find later. You could also put clean coding here as an alias. What that means is later when we're looking for something and I type clean coding, it's still going to show me this note for clean code. What if I was just looking for good code and not clean code? So I might put that in alias later to try and guess what future me is going to be searching for when I want to stumble across this note. Now for time. Now the time part was already filled in for me. If you remember, I had a template that had a templator string. That's what this looks like. And because this templator string has these brackets, it's also a link to my daily note. So if I hover over that, it goes right to my note for today. The reason that I like to link to the daily note is that now when I go to the daily note and I won't show you everything because there might be some private things in there. But now if I go back in time to any note, I'm going to be able to look at the linked mentions for this and I'll be able to see the things that I did that day. So for example, it's saying that I worked on clean code and apparently I worked on this page on Pirate Borg, which is a TTRPG system. And there were a bunch of things that were synced through Readwise today. In this way, I'm kind of using the natural chronology of my daily notes to kind of put bookmarks in my vault of what I was thinking when. And that way I can follow along that trail if I need to remember what I was thinking of later on in the future. So the time part is taken care of. What about category? Well, you can say that it's a software development thing already. But I might also think that maybe the category of this is best practices. So I don't have a note for that yet, but I can already see like I have best practices for application performance testing for initializing a new virtual server, Git best practices, scripting best practices, Kubernetes best practices. Okay. So just by thinking about the category, I've already identified something that isn't in my notes that maybe should be. Apparently I write about best practices a lot. So I'm actually going to put this in best practice. I'm already creating an alias because I don't want to create this note right now, but I just want to link to it and then later on create a best practices note. H stands for hierarchy. Now I think about this in terms of relationships. How does this relate to other notes? Where is it on the hierarchy of my notes? So I already talked about software development. I probably would still go and identify that as a parent, but I might also 
put in something like related and I'm going to say test driven development because that is something that's like an adjacent topic. I could also say something like applies best practices. And that way this is delineating this as an application of the general concept of best practices. I could also say that aside from just best practices, the principle of atomicity is also something that I'm applying in this concept of clean code. So I've gone through the latch system. L is the location where this note is within the other notes. Alphabet, I've given it a descriptive title and alias. I've bookmarked it in time by adding the date and a link to my daily notes. I've added some things that are more categorical like best practices. And I've thought about the H of hierarchy and added some metadata here that are relational and are mentioning other notes, whether they exist or not. So that's how I write notes to be found. But the other part of encouraging emergence in my note taking is regularly reviewing my vault and looking for different ways to find ideas that are ready to emerge. So here are some ways that I might do that. Really the most common way that I might try to find something is using the quick switcher. So you can open up the quick switcher, make sure that it's enabled, but I always just do command O and that is my keyboard shortcut for it. And then I might try code, the so code spaces. Maybe I'll try coding and look, this is already number five. But even if I were looking for something else, I could just go down the list and look at the notes where I've said code or coding. This is when having that alias is a really good idea because as you can see, there's so much more that comes up for code versus what came up for coding. But the quick switcher is only searching through the file names. What if I mention code in the body of the note, not in the file name? I'd open up the search pane here and then I would put coding. It appears I've written about coding 148 times. I could also say coding or code and that comes up a lot more. So 1869 results. This is also looking at N code though, which is not something that I actually wanted. So I could do it like this. So I added double quotes and then a space before code. That way things like encode or decode aren't going to turn up in the results. So that's still 1363 results. We could narrow this down further by saying, I don't want to see things that are in a certain path. Like I can see this is from a game. So I don't want to bring up things from a game. So I'm just going to exclude the TTRPGs folder. And now it's 1353 results and I could keep going like this. Maybe I don't need to look through meetings. Maybe I don't need to look through people because I'm looking for ideas. So those are things when I already know kind of the keyword that I'm looking for. But what if I don't? What if I don't have any topic in mind and I'm just trying to identify topics in the first place? Well, I do have something called lightning rods of thought. So this is what it looks like in my Patreon vault. I call it lightning rods of thought because I kind of like the idea of a topic being a lightning rod that's drawing electricity to it. Kind of like how really good ideas just naturally tend to draw in other notes because if it's a good idea, then you're interested in it, then you probably have built up this kind of electrical field around that idea where you're just naturally drawn to it. So to be able to identify them, there are four data view queries that I've got here. First is a list of notes by the number of outgoing links. This is identifying notes that have a lot of things that it's linking to. So when I click on this, it's not going to be as relevant here for the Patreon one because this is really more of a structure rather than anything with real content. This is what it looks like in my vault. And I am looking at the top 50 and I'm also adding a bunch of things to the query here. So I'm not just looking at the number of links that are going out of the page. I'm also removing some file paths because I don't, for example, want to bring in people or meetings here. So I'm excluding the private folder. I don't want like video ideas showing up here. So I'm removing system and things like that. There is identify what some people call MOC or a map of content. A map of content is really just a page on a topic. And because it is a general topic, 
it often has other things that you're linking to it from. For example, if we go down the list, a lot of these top ones are related to my work because that forms a big part of what I like to work on. So if I click on JMeter here, you'll see that not only have I worked on this quite a bit, and this was after only after I moved this to Obsidian because I know this is a pretty old node, but it's also linking to a lot of other things. JMeter is definitely worthy of being a map of content. So this is something that I might want to have a look at creating content for because I've already written a lot about it and adjacent topics. Another one here that's interesting is this one for tools for publishing and distribution. Maybe this is something that I should think about. I've never written anything on this and yet I'm linking to a lot of tools and there's definitely a lot here that I could write about. Even though I've never thought about going and doing some research for publishing for this in particular, I've just kind of cobbled it together from me needing to know tools that fulfill different parts of this interesting tabletop role-playing games is another thing I didn't really think about creating this page but it's just kind of evolved over time to have a lot of things that are linking from it so that was notes by the number of outgoing links but incoming links is kind of interesting as well these are the pages that have a lot of things linking to it so this is trying to identify a different piece of the puzzle this is identifying notes that already exist but maybe aren't quite fleshed out yet. So for example, I'm talking a lot about Dungeons and Dragons and I do have a note on it, but maybe this could still be fleshed out further given that 138 notes are linking to it. You know, maybe I should think about actually bringing those in a bit more. Like there's obviously a lot of rule stuff here. Maybe I should have a section here for rules. Maybe that's something that I should create content about or write a little bit more about. The third part here is I'm embedding a search for a keyword. This is also a data view query. So I am looking for a single line that has the two words observability and tracing in the same line. I'm trying to see how often I've said both of those words in the same sentence. And these are the things that it returns. So this is interesting because I can go through and try to maybe create a note on observability and tracing because it seems like I've written some things about it. So there obviously is a connection, but maybe not a super strong one. So this might be a prompt to flesh out that connection a little bit more. And then the last one in this page is orphans. These are notes that aren't linked to anything. Why aren't they linked to anything? Well, that's an interesting question. For example, I have a page on accents and apparently i think i created this for D, D. so i have some videos so that i can kind of remember what certain accents sound like because i like accents and maybe i need to put this in a D, &D or role-playing note or maybe put some text around it to say what the purpose of this page is this is another thing too, where I'm analyzing metrics on K6 cloud, and yet it's not linked to pages that I know exist, like the one on load testing metrics or K6 or K6 cloud or load testing. I mean, this is just a good practice to regularly review this list and kind of think what could it be related to? Because these notes already exist. I'm just never going to be able to find them if they're not linked to anything else. Another way to find notes is by using Excalibrain. Excalibrain is a really awesome plugin that I have talked about quite a bit. I have made videos on Excalibrain and I've also interviewed the developer Zoltvitsian. So let's go and look at that clean code note. And in Excalibrain, this is what that looks like. These are the notes that I already created, but it's also showing the relationships there. So it's got related and did the date, of course. And then it's saying that clean code is, is a child of software development. So let's look into software development. Okay, so this is software development. And I really like Excalibrain because it uses the metadata that I set within the note. And it also has an option, which I've turned on here, to show notes that don't exist. For example, I was talking about clean code 
but I also apparently have linked to expressive code, but that is not something that exists. Maybe I should look at creating it and seeing what the linkages are between expressive code and clean code. And there's some here that do already exist, like software testing. Hey, maybe software testing is also a way to apply clean code. So maybe I could talk about how clean code can be applied to software testing because tests can be code as well. Or maybe I can talk about Sublime Text or which IDEs are best for creating clean and expressive code. It's interesting to see things like separation of concerns. So what is the relationship between clean code and a separation of concerns? It seems like separation of concerns should be a characteristic that clean code has. And I can kind of explore things as I go and see it's linked to the principle of atomicity here. So I can click on each of these and then the view changes and it sometimes takes me to interesting places. Now, when I look at principle of atomicity, we're looking at technical writing as well as service oriented architecture. What does it mean to have clean code in the context of note taking? Clicking on things in Excalibur is something that I have done and could do for hours because it's just exploring your own vault. Sometimes it's interesting because it shows connections that maybe you might not have made. Other ways that you can find your notes are through folders. This is more traditional. Some people like them more than others. Personally, I like to have fewer folders and this is not really a way that I discover new notes. It's more just, I, I just pretty much like to have most of my notes outside of the folder structure really. But some people like those. I've been really liking bookmarks. Bookmarks are kind of a compromise between folders, links, and sort of tags because you can have one page and multiple bookmark groups. I also like to put things on here that I want to remind myself of. So this is a good place to go if I'm wanting to find a note later on. There's also tags, which I'm not as intentional about, but some people are. You could definitely tag different notes and find them here that way. One thing I do do is, for example, when people give me feedback on my videos or my work in general, I do link them here and I try to categorize them based on whether they're like plugins or based on learning or things like that. Then of course there's links from other notes. So when I'm thinking about that clean code note example, maybe I could have that as a link in the software development note. How funny, I actually just noticed I had already created a link to it, even though that note didn't exist until just now. That's probably a good sign that I linked, the, linked it to the right page. Another thing I like to do is use randomness to discover things. So back to my Patreon vault, this is an example of a daily note, um, although I haven't put anything in it. So this is effectively the template just with the templates replaced. And I have a random note here that shows me a note that has the tag inbox. And this is a way of resurfacing notes that maybe I haven't thought about in a very long time. So those are the two ways that I like to facilitate emergent note taking. A third kind of bonus tip though, is to learn in public. I've talked about this a little bit, but in general, I think that being able to put your notes out there or just talking in public about what you are learning and being a little bit more open about the learning process rather than the learning product, I think is very useful for other people, myself included. I love seeing everybody else's work in progress. When there's a culture of learning in public in a community in general, I think it really helps to encourage the emergence of new ideas because there's just more out there that can be stumbled upon by other people. I think learning in public is one of the ways that we can contribute back to a community and also learn from the community because it's encouraging other people to do the same. Emergent note-taking is a fundamentally subversive activity. It's about throwing away the idea that you need to know in advance what you're going to write or learn about, and instead throwing yourself wholeheartedly into the passion of learning, the passion of writing, and seeing what sticks. It's not for everyone, and it's not for all circumstances, but when it does work, it can be hugely rewarding. 
If you'd like to learn more about how to apply these techniques, then check out this video where I go through a presentation, but also talk about how I came up with things for that presentation. Kind of a meta video. Thank you for watching. Todos los días son así. No podía imaginarlo cuando vine aquí.